I first heard about um, resilience insurance when I was um, on a trip to Sydney. We were talking to um, a large developer there who was having a ton of success and we were seeing their project perform super well and they were in a very um, competitive area and they were consistently kind of outperforming that, um, their kind of competitors in the precinct. And I spoke to the, the CEO of the development company and asked them what were the key things and why did they think they had been successful. Um, and I hadn't met Corey at this point and never heard about resilience insurance, but he described to me um, what resilience insurance does. Um, and you know, I think it's particularly relevant for the Queensland market right now. It's a most developed, like, a lot of the market in New South Wales are talking about um, this out latent defects insurance product. Consumer confidence is quickly rising in terms of, uh, sorry, awareness is rising. Um, and so we're, um, we're excited to be partnered up with Resilience Insurance, educating buyers and you know, refining their offering and making it, um, you know, hopefully lifting the tide again for people that have uh, more people having a good experience buying off the plan because the more people that have a good experience, the more successful we're all collectively going to be. So I'm going to start just by um, running through a, a bit of a um, some a bit of a study that we did to kind of understand the current state of the market, and then we're going to have a bit of a chat about um, you know what what Corey and the team are up to here in Queensland. So we wanted to find out you know. How much does um, how much do people understand about latent defects insurance? I kind of work in the sector. I knew bugger all about it um, until recently, and um, and we wanted to know, you know, are they prepared to pay for it? How much? How much of a cost centre is it? What are the opportunities for that to become a profit centre? How does it affect um, you know consumer confidence and sell through rates and yield, etc. So we did this piece, we um, went out to 5,000 people looking to buy off the plan um, and asked them a bunch of uh, questions around this, so it was a, it was a national kind of um, piece. So we asked them about you know, we, what they thought about the concept of it, of um, you know, defects insurance, all the, and it's surprising because a lot of people think it's important, but actually not many people know about it. The, the fact that it's kind of a 10 year piece. And so we, whenever we ask people about how, as you guys saw earlier from this um, piece that we did previously, is how important is, um, you know, or ha how much concern do they have about the developer and the builder? It's right up there in terms of their biggest concerns. And we know that's the case here in Queensland as well. Um, and so we're expecting to see people become more and more aware of this. And we think it's going to be the thing that can really help to kind of improve our collective value proposition against the established market. Uh, and so we asked people if they needed to um, spend 1.5% more on their apartment. Uh, in order to get a 10-year defects um, coverage, how would, would they pay the extra money? And 75% of people came back and said that they would pay more than um, the 1.5%, which is kind of the average cost it attached. So this is an exciting thing for us when we look at, well, we know consumer confidence is low with, and, and it's blocking transactions happening. We know the product costs around 1.5%. And we now know that 75% of people would pay 1.5% more, more in order to have this product attached to the thing. So there's an opportunity for not only for it to increase the kind of sell through rate, but also um, really um, even become a cost center, a profit center, sorry. So tell us about resilience insurance, mate, and, um, and the journey, where are you guys at? Obviously it's getting quickly adopted in New South Wales, and do you want to talk a bit about why that is and, and then what's the outlook for Queensland? Yeah, thanks Mike. Um, resilience insurance, one of the reasons not many people have heard, heard about us is we're relatively new. So uh, <laughs> we introduced this product, we're the first one to bring it to Australia. Um, it's only existed here through ourselves for about two years, but it's a product that's, uh, that's lived overseas for more than 70 years. It's well established all over the world, we've just never done it here. What we've tried to do is to change the way we insure buildings. So before I go into it, everyone says, I'm not the insurer. <laughs> but uh, we've tried to change the way we do it, actually support the market. And there's two key parts to how we do that, I guess, here. Um, it was really interesting listening to the guys before about you know, feasibility. There's so many challenges when you're putting together a development, whether it's feasibility, land, material, labour, there's no end of challenges in terms of how that comes together. But the data you've got, Mike, shows that consumers are prepared to pay more for certainty and for uh, that coverage that, that, that gives them that 10 year security off the back of that. Importantly, when you're talking about that cost centre point, the first point is that profit centre 
measure. So when we talk about an average cost of one and a half, that's one and a half of construction cost. They're prepared to pay one and a half of development cost. Very big difference, very big difference. So you've got uh, an actual profit centre in that point. What latent defects insurance does though is we get involved at the start of the project. So we support the builder and developer through that project by having an independent QA registered with the insurer of our panel that sits with you all the way through and make sure that those things are, uh, are performed properly. We then back that up with a 10 year insurance policy for the building value. So it's not limited to a bit of this or a bit of that, it's the full building value that we insure it for for 10 years for those structural issues. Now, um, most people will say, uh, why did you start in New South Wales and where did that come from? Well, New South Wales was easy. The, the market there was <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> yeah. so, um, you know, we also hear in that, and I hear it all over the country, I've heard it in Melbourne, heard it on the coast, heard it in Brisbane, everywhere. we don't have problems. Doesn't exist here. Rubbish. Uh, the, it, they exist everywhere. There is so much evidence of that's the case that there are problems there. What this product does is it's selectively offered. Right. We'll only give it to the good developers and builders. And in New South Wales, we've got history of that, that we've said no to dozens of builders and developers because they just don't have the quality set or the quality positional mindset post completion. You know, I think when, when I kind of was um, first learning more about it in terms of our whole mission is around improving the quality of new homes that people live in. It impacts their financial life massively their quality of life and that's what kind of gets our bed our team out of bed in the morning and um and i thought when we when we first spoke that it would primarily be you know developers that have tier two or tier three builders or lower kind of brand reputation in terms of they would need to kind of use that in order to uplift what that what their kind of um you know they increase their sales conversion rates, reduce the kind of like lack of brand awareness, and that would be the adoption. But then, um, you know, one of our um, partners in New South Wales, who is one of the largest developers in the state, Daycorp, they've got a massive, repu a huge reputation in the market um, for delivering great stuff, not too dissimilar from yourself, Brooke. And they kind of, um, they were one of the first adopters. Mm -hmm. And I think the, um, the fact that it's kind of not the lower quality players who you would think would need to offset it, it's actually the higher quality players are kind of pushing up the bar of what is going to be required in the future in terms of the the amount of risk in which consumers are prepared to take on is going to continue to decrease because they know they have much lower risks in the established market. And I think as um, more people become aware of this type of thing, and obviously we also have to have the ICERT rating system in um, New South Wales, but to me, you know, even what we try to do by showcasing to consumers, this is all the stuff that the developer's done before. This is, it's kind of a proxy for risk. We're trying to communicate to people to say, hey, you know, because this person's done a lot of successful projects in the past, it means that there's a higher propensity that they're gonna deliver a great project. Um, but what I think the LDI product does is it gives consumers confidence in a way where it's like you kind of have, don't actually have to um, have as much trust in the developer and the builder because you guys are going to be wearing the consequences if something goes wrong. Yeah, look, that's 100% right. So that cost element, we've looked at that, we've done that modelling, and we're supported by one of the largest insurers, or reinsurers, in fact, in the world. They've done this stuff for 70 years. They've got a balance sheet larger than the Australian economy. So they're huge in terms of where that sits. So from a point of view of financial viability, it works. And that's because we get involved and partner with the builder and developer up front. But it's important what you said before, Mike, around why builders and developers, those better builders and developers are taking this product on. It is a security, it is a surety. Uh, and I think Brooke and Damien were talking about it before with the balance sheet protection. The other benefit of this product for the builder and developer is that post completion delivery for 10 years. It's not saying that the builder and developer will walk away because they bought an insurance policy, they won't, right? They still want to protect brand. It's not about the small minor issue that we all might think is a small issue, that's easily repaired. It's what happens when the catastrophic issue occurs. That can happen to anyone. If you look at you know, lend lease with Jordan Springs in New South Wales, great developer, great builder, something went wrong. Right? Those are the catastrophic events that can occur. Where this happens post completion, the policy that we issue on this product is what we call strict liability and without trying to give everyone an insurance lesson. What that means is we stand at the front point. We are the absolute first point of call. There is no need for the owners or the body corp or whatever to litigate. They come straight to us. In fact, it costs the money to litigate against us. So I've had a, a number of calls in New South Wales from 
certain segments of the legal fraternity that have built a business model off frightening buddy corporates into bringing cases because we're killing their business model. There is no need for them to go to the lawyer and then off to the Supreme Court to lodge an action. They come straight to us because that's what our policy is there to do. We work in partnership with the builder and developer, so we bring them into the, into the fold to protect their brand, but at the end of the day, it's my money that's paying for it. And, and so I guess if I'm, if I'm a builder right now, I'm thinking, geez, having an independent QA coming through it, it sounds like work in admin. Um, do you want to talk to us about um, that? Yeah, sure. Look, I mean, uh, you mentioned Daycorp before, and I won't, I won't mention the words that have been used to me with Daycorp as we were bringing these projects together. They were really uh, not in favour of the product or the QA program. They're now some of the biggest supporters of it. We don't actually administer that program. We have a, a number of uh, partners that we use, national and in some cases international inspection groups that are all engineered based and, and the like. They're, they're specialists across a range of sectors. They do a whole heap of QA for us that we want done throughout that project. But we get the developer and builder to program that. We don't need to get involved in the job. Let the builder and developer work out the time schedule. If it needs to move, move it. You know, just build it into your build program. Because we're involved at the start, there's no encumbrance there. It's X number of inspections, you know, months or weeks out from the job, put it in your program and off you go, let your PM manage how that works going through. If you need to move it, move it. It happens on every job. What we found, and Daycourt was a really good example, this is where it's saving developers and builders a whole heap of money was uh, the Daycorp example. I was on leave, I know you were last week, I was in the same place, but uh, right. I got a phone call from uh, the CFO at Daycorp when they got their first QA uh, report through this program. It was a four page report of defects, or what they call defects. Some of it was just incomplete stuff to that point or whatever it was. And the language was pretty salty, as you'd expect, and I was on holiday, so I let it go. I waited two or three days, I got a call back from the same guy, he goes, the report was right, that's good, but it hasn't cost me anything because I've gone back to the subbies and everyone else and said, I'm not paying you until you fix it. It saved that builder and developer a massive amount of money on going back after the job, destructive testing, all of the rest of that stuff in pulling it apart and redoing it. So it was a big win for the, for the developer. And we're now starting to see that with the likes of Urban Development Group, Daycorp, a whole range of developers in that space that are coming through and being really support, big supporters of that program because it is there to help the builder and developer and save them costs down the track. And, and so you mentioned a bit about, you know, you're kind of selective um, with the builders and developers that you offer it to. You know, how selective are you? What are the criteria in which you make that decision based on? There's a, there's a whole raft of criteria that we'll look at. We, we are incredibly selective. There are many developers or builders that we have said no to because the risk is too high. At the end of the day, you get a $100 million build on a building, owed $100 million worth of exposure for the next 10, probably 15 years. I'm not just giving it to anyone. It's not a ticket of, all right, well, I've got some premium in the door, off I walk. I've got to pay that bill, I got that exposure, I take on a big piece of your balance sheet risk as a builder developer down the track. So I'm extremely selective, it's about history, it's about capability, what do you do, what's your response rate to go back and, and engage with, with those people and how prepared are you to work with us and others through the project. And, and so if I'm a developer right now and I'm like, I've got a tier two or tier three builder, I kind of do need to get my project going. Um, what types of things should I be thinking about when, before I come to you guys in terms of the questions that you're going to ask me? Um, what, what are the questions you're going to ask me and how do I make sure I'm well prepared? And Because I can imagine for some consumers, if this could be the difference in them buying development A or buying development B, and the builder that I ch I've got two or three different options, hopefully, even if they're tier two or tier three on the building side, and if one, build, one of those builders is able to get the insurance and, and the others aren't, you know, that's a meaningful difference in terms of that decision. So how can they be incorporating the thinking into that? Yeah, look, it's a decision that you need to make, and, and it is a big shift. We're shifting the way insurance is done on these developments moving forward in Australia. When we talk, Mike, about some of these findings, that's where this becomes really important, that, yeah, it's great to get a survey and a study and these sort of things, and these are really meaningful data points. We now have this in lived experience in New South Wales already. We have regions in New South Wales. In fact, we got some, some, uh, some new, uh, new developers that uh, had come to us last week in a, an area called Norwest in, in Sydney that had previously told us, never going to buy your product, hate what it is, not going to do it. 
They're building in Norwest. Three other projects already had our cover there and they can't sell against that because the downsizer market is coming in saying, love who you are, you've got a big brand, you've got a great product, we've seen these ones, but I'm buying where that thing is insured because I don't have to worry about it moving forward. In the hills in Sydney, same thing, just numerous amounts of jobs where that's happening. We've got media articles all over the place where Sydney Morning Herald did some, some reporting in that space where people were making selections in one tower against the other because it had 10-year insurance. Because the consumer is sitting there saying, if I've got this price and I'm paying that and it's already built in and I've got 10 years of insurance, I don't need to worry about that confidence point. That's where you need to be as a builder and developer, is sitting there saying, how do I take that heat out of my next purchase? Yeah, we've already started getting, you know, we kind of gained so much insight from the consumer asking us questions and emailing us back asking different things. And we've already had requests to incorporate filters within our product to incorporate whether they have the insurance product or not. And, you know, when consumer confidence in the developer and builder category is, is tough right now, particularly in Queensland, it's well documented the challenges related to the building stuff. That's why I wanted to have you guys come, have yourself come and share a bit about what you guys are doing in, uh, in New South Wales. Obviously, you're just starting to enter the, the Queensland market. Have you, um, where are you kind of at with that whole process? Are you kind of looking for your initial partners and, and how's the whole kind of like Queensland thing going for you? Yeah, look, yeah, you're right. We're just, we're just moving into Queensland. We've got a couple of people here. So Lexi down the back who's based in Queensland and, and Melissa here. Um, we're just coming into Queensland and yeah, we are looking for partners up here. So we're looking for our first developers or, and or builders that want to take this product out and, and work with us moving forward. It's not a quick burn in terms of where that goes and we want to find the right partners and, and deliver the right projects. That will deliver benefits from that point of view. We, we do a lot of work with the likes of yourselves, with the agents, but we also take on that assistance point for the developer where all of the collateral we can provide for them to give to their agents, to give to prospective purchasers around what does this mean, what is the value, what are we going to do post completion, we've got all of that collateral. We give you that, we want to partner with those right providers and, and do what we can. Well, as Damien said, the people that are buying right now have a lot of time on their hands and if you want them calling yourself instead of calling calling the developer and the agent, um, I think it's a good thing. So thank you so much for coming and sharing and also for helping to support the event today so we can bring this stuff to you guys for free and and, um, and share the insights from great people in the industry. We've got um, a bar tab, so if you guys want to hang out, talk to other people in the sector. This is the kind of end of official proceedings, but I really appreciate all of you guys coming today, taking the time out of your day, and for everyone that supported us by being a customer, we deeply appreciate it. We're not like a huge corporate company. You know, we kind of are running this business, trying to try to do the, a good thing for the market in terms of helping the consumers and, you know, building a great enduring company that is good for the industry and it's good for the, for the people that are looking to buy a new home. Um, so thank you everyone for taking the time today to come and, and join us and um, hope you enjoy a beer or wine or a water on us. <laughs>